Are you an outdoor enthusiast? Are you looking to create your own outdoor adventure? How about finding a way to get the kids off the electronics? Or maybe you just like taking a walk or a run with a loved one. Perhaps getting away and sleeping underneath the stars. If you answered yes to any of these questions, then this video will be for you. In this video, we're going to be discussing about getting out of that city grind and getting away to some local destinations. Not only are we going to be discussing about fishing these top 10 lakes, included in this list will be hiking, camping, and many other outdoor activities that you can enjoy. So where exactly in the world is the Inland Empire? The Inland Empire is located in Southern California and consists of Riverside and San Bernardino County. Some will say the 909, 951, and maybe a touch of the 760 area code. Both counties do extend out to the Nevada-Arizona border. Those lakes part of the Colorado River Basin will not be included in this list. In fact, those lakes and cities really want nothing to do with the Inland Empire. If you are flying into LAX, the Inland Empire is located about 60 miles east of the airport. From LAX, you could reach some of these destinations in about a one to two hour drive time, always depending on traffic. Oh yeah, before I forget, we are gonna be saying no to private lakes and regional parks. Although we are gonna give a pass to a lake that has slowly been converted to a regional park over time. And last but not least, we're gonna make sure to include the cost of each lake. All right, so here are my rhymes. Now that you got out of the mist, you got all that great info, we're gonna get into the intro and let's get going on this list. Hi, my name is Mike with Out All Day, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 lakes in the Inland Empire that you can enjoy today. Scratching the list at number 10, Lake Evans, Fairmont Park, Riverside. Before I get slammed in my comment section, I do want to mention a few things on this lake. Back in the 80s, 90s, and into the early 2000s, this lake had gotten a really bad rap for the homeless and as well as being the term ghetto. Since about 2012, the city of Riverside has really done an awesome job on cleaning up this place. They've added lights, a new pathway, and has made it a very family-friendly park to enjoy. Also, during renovation of the park, they added a huge playground for the kiddos. I think they spent like over $2 million on this playground. It's really nice, you gotta go check it out. Now, this lake does have a little bit of history to it. The designers of New York Central Park designed Fairmont Park and Lake Evans as well. The father had laid out and designed all the plans. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1903. A few years later, his son succeeded the project. Now, are the homeless still around? Yeah, well, occasionally they do come around from time to time, but it's not like the camps that they used to set up back in the day. And Riverside Police Department does a great job patrolling the park to keep it a family-friendly environment. What I tend to favor a lot about this lake is the amount of trees that it has. So if you're walking around the pathway, you're not going to get too sunburned. There's a lot of trees to keep you shaded. Makes it really nice and enjoyable. Fun fact, the trees that were planted in 1911 are still alive today. So some of these trees that you see out there are going to be over 100 years old, which is pretty cool. Not only can you do a nice walk around the lake, you can also challenge yourself at Mount Rubido. Once you reach the summit, you'll be rewarded with nice scenic views. Unfortunately, camping is not allowed at or around the lake and no overnight stay within the park. When it comes to fishing Lake Evans, there is a healthy warm water species of fish that live in this lake, such as your bluegills, your crappie, carp, and of course, your largemouth bass. With the amount of forage that's in this lake, there are some quality bass that do get caught. First time anglers will love this lake. My advice, head on over to Walmart or Bass Pro, invest in an inexpensive combo, grab yourself some dough bait, and catch yourself a huge carp. Once you're hooked, be ready for that ride. <laughs> One thing I did forget to mention, Aww. because this is a city park lake, don't be surprised if you catch that rare abandoned aquarium fish that somebody dropped into this lake. <laughs> Okay, so all in all, what is this going to cost you to get into Fairmont Park? Zero dollars. It costs zero dollars to enjoy everything that I've mentioned so far. During the summer months, the park does offer paddle boats for a small fee. If you're looking to launch a kayak or a small watercraft, non-motorized, for a small fee, you could obtain that permit through the city of Riverside. Number nine. Staying in Riverside County, we're going to be heading over to Lake Elsinore in the city of Lake Elsinore. Now this lake is unique in its own special way. Lake Elsinore is the largest natural freshwater lake in Southern California. The lake does get its water from the San Jacinto River. Right now lake levels are a little on the low side. In case you haven't heard, California is in a serious drought right now and we definitely need the water. Fun fact, the city of Lake Elsinore was considered a resort town back in the early 1900s. Today, the population of Lake Elsinore is over 70,000. 
lake activities that you should totally take advantage of are boating, jet skiing, swimming, and of course, fishing. When in season, check out the California Golden Poppies. It's only a short drive from the lake. When it comes to hiking at Lake Elsinore, there's really not too much around. If you take Highway 74 West, aka the Ortega Highway, a short drive on this highway and you'll be at Ortega Falls. This is a great hike for the little ones. It's only a half a mile hike round trip. A word of caution though, you will be having to climb on top of boulders to get to the waterfalls. Some of the best times to check out the waterfall is after a heavy rain. If you continue west on Highway 74, that'll take you all the way to Orange County and you can be at the beach. If you're looking to chill out and have a barbecue, there are plenty of public parks around the lake and some even have swim beaches. Lake Elsinore is your typical warm water fishery. They have bluegills, crappie, huge catfish, and of course, largemouth bass. But they also have a unique type of fish, which is a hybrid fish called a wiper. This fish is a combination of a striped bass and a white bass. Because of this combination, it makes it a voracious fish to catch. The lake does offer a lot of shoreline fishing, such as Whiskers Fishing Beach. You can also shore fish over at the Launch Point Marina area. And in case you forgot something, there is a tackle store in that area. Okay, so what is Lake Elsinore gonna cost you to get in? If you take advantage of the public parks that are around the lake and some of the designated fishing areas, well then your bill could be zero dollars. If you're looking to go camping, looks like it could run you about $35 on up per night. If you decide to park your car over at Launch Point Marina, expect to pay $10 per car. Launch fees at the lake are gonna run you $20 per vessel. If you're looking to spend some money outside of the lake, there are plenty of activities that you can enjoy. You can check out a minor league baseball game. If dirt bikes are your thing, you can check out the motocross racetrack. And if you like the adrenaline of jumping out of a plane, you can always go skydiving. Eight. Lake Skinner in the city of Winchester, Riverside County. Another one for Riverside County is Lake Skinner. Lake Skinner will be the first lake on this list that requires an entry fee. This lake does offer year-round fun activities such as boating, hiking, and fishing. Lake Skinner Reservoir gets its main supply of water from the Colorado River Aqueduct. Because this lake is under a lease with the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, there are going to be some things on this lake that you cannot do. Because Lake Skinner is used as a drinking water resource for Riverside and San Diego County, body contact is not allowed in the lake. So what does that mean? Unfortunately, swimming is not allowed and jet skis are prohibited. During the summer months, Lake Skinner does offer a splash pad area that you can enjoy with a paid admission. Fun fact, the Temecula Valley Balloon and Wine Festival is held annually at Lake Skinner. If you're looking for a nice family friendly hike, they do have some low impact trails. And then if you're the extreme hiker, they have some high impact trails as well. Now Lake Skinner does have a variety of fish that you could choose to target. And again, you got your typical panfish such as your bluegills and your crappie. And then you have some nice largemouth bass that come cruising by. And in the summer months, they stock catfish. And in the winter months, they stock trout. And of course, not to leave out are your striped bass. And these fish do get big in this lake. All right, so what is it gonna cost you to get into this lake? Well, if you're looking just to enjoy a day at the lake, it's gonna run you about $6 per adult and $3 per child, 12 and younger. If you're looking to do some fishing, it's gonna be $10 per adult and $8 per child, 12 and younger. Out all day boat rentals. To rent a pontoon boat, all day is gonna run you $410 and they do require a $400 deposit. If you're looking to rent a fishing skiff, all day is gonna run you $145 with a $150 deposit. The marina does have hourly rates for these boats, so if that fits a little bit better into your budget, make sure to take a look into that pricing. The lake does offer kayak rentals. So if you wanna get a kayak, paddle around. It's always a lot of fun. Camping is gonna run you about $30 to $50 per night, depending on the site. On top of your entry fee, it's going to be $7 to launch a boat. And for a pet, it's going to be $2 per day. 7. Driving into the San Bernardino Mountains, we have Green Valley Lake in the city of Green Valley. The city of Green Valley is a small town. The town only has 300 residents, but it does have over 1,100 properties around the lake. Now the lake is relatively small, sitting at only 9 acres. This will be the smallest lake on this list. But with alpine views, this lake is huge on making family memories. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned about taking a walk with a loved one. Yeah, this is the lake you could do this at. It's a nice walk around the lake. It's a perfect trail. 
And with the lake sitting over 7,000 feet, it's great for scenic views. While driving into the town of Green Valley, there are a few businesses that you need to check out. The first one being the tackle shop and general store. The staff is very nice and they have a lot of knowledge of what's going on at the lake. The store does have a fair selection of tackle that's pretty effective at the lake. And if you already have that tackle that you need, then make sure to treat yourself to a Green Valley t-shirt or a hoodie and get yourself some baked goods. You deserve it. Now that you got that Green Valley swag, head on over to one of the two restaurants that are in town, get yourself a big fat cheeseburger and support that small local business. The hospitality and service are great at both places. When it comes to fishing Green Valley Lake, this is an awesome lake for young anglers. There is an abundance of crappie that are in this lake. So rigging up with four pound test, a bobber, crappie jig, and tipped off with a mealworm, by using this method, the young ones will have a great day fishing and you'll have a great day of making memories. Not only is the crappie fishing really good here, but the lake is stocked pretty heavily with rainbow trout during the seasonal months. When it comes to fun facts about Green Valley, Unfortunately, I couldn't locate anything. However, I do know one thing for sure, that when you come up here to Green Valley, you will have a fun time, and that is a fact. Okay, so what is it gonna cost you to enjoy a day here at Green Valley Lake? If you're looking just to walk around the lake and enjoy the scenery, that's gonna cost you zero dollars. If you're looking to do a little swimming at the lake, it's gonna run you seven dollars for adult, and children 10 and under are gonna be five dollars. If you're looking to go fishing, adults are gonna be $25, Children 15 and under, gonna run you $15. If you're looking to rent a rowboat, first and second hour will be $12 an hour. And then after that second hour, it's gonna be $8 an hour. Camping and overnight staying at Green Valley Lake is prohibited. However, if you continue to drive down Green Valley Road, it will take you to the Green Valley Campground. And there you could stay for $8 a night. If sleeping on the dirt floor is not your thing, I would highly advise you to check out some cabins that are available to rent around the lake. When it comes to pricing on the cabins, it all just varies. So check out some websites, see what's in the right budget for you, and cozy up in a warm cabin. Six, driving on Highway 18, or also known as Rim of the World Highway, by taking this highway and a few turns, you'll be at Lake Gregory and the town of Crestline. This is the lake I gave a pass to about being a regional park. Lake Gregory is a reservoir located in the San Bernardino Mountains. The lake and the surrounding areas make up the Lake Gregory Regional Park. Now this lake and the town of Crestline do have a lot to offer. Being that Lake Gregory is adjacent to Crestline, there's options for dining and there's a store nearby. During the summer months, boat rentals are available. Also available during summer months, the lake is open for swimming and you can enjoy the inflatable water park and water slides. Lake Gregory does offer designated picnic areas. When it comes to a leisurely stroll, there is a nice path that goes along the lake. If you're looking to do a casual hike with some rewarding views, check out the Heart Rock Trail. This is a moderate hike awesome for family adventures. Unfortunately, camping and overnight stay at the lake is not allowed. Similar to our last entry, there are plenty of cabins that you can enjoy around town and around the lake. When it comes to the 4th of July celebration, there's nothing like fireworks on a lake. Be sure to check out the annual 4th of July celebrations in the city of Crestline. Best of all, the town events and the fireworks show are free. Fun fact, the movie Creep was filmed here at Lake Gregory in the town of Crestline and surrounding areas. When it comes to fishing Lake Gregory, cold water species of fish do really well here. This lake does really well when it comes to trout fishing. In the past years, they've stocked the lake with rainbow trout and they stocked the lake with brown trout. The lake does have other species of fish here as well, such as largemouth bass and bluegills, but it's the rainbow trout on why most people fish this lake. All right, let's ring that cash bell and let's see what this is gonna cost you. If you're looking to walk around the lake and get some nice scenic views, that's gonna run you $0. Parking lot fees are gonna be $10 per vehicle. However, there's options for no cost parking as well. In the summer months from Memorial Day to Labor Day, the cost to enjoy the lake is gonna run you $10 per person. If you're looking to get that all access pass, which includes water slides, inflatable water park, and the beach, you're looking at $20 per person per day. Children three and under are free. When it comes to fishing, you're gonna be looking at $10 per day. Also wanted to inform you that if you're gonna be hanging out at those designated picnic areas, that's gonna be $10 per person. When it comes to being on the water at Lake Gregory, be sure to check out one of those Duffy boats. These boats are designed for family leisure time on the water. Last but not least, don't forget to support small local businesses while visiting the town of Crestline. Now that we had a great time here at Lake Gregory, let's take a short drive to our next location. Five, Silverwood Lake in the city of Hesperia. 
Silverwood Lake is part of the California State Park System. Now this lake is probably one of my favorite lakes on this list and is located in the San Bernardino Mountains about 11 miles east of the 15 freeway. During the winter months the lake does get some snow and in the summers temperatures are nice and comfortable. Speaking of weather, always be prepared because this lake will get windy. Silverwood Lake is highly enjoyable because of the nice weather and all the outdoor fun that you can have. When it comes to activities at this lake, you can expect to do some boating, swimming, picnicking, camping, hiking, bicycling, and fishing. If you're looking to cool off in the summer heat, Silverwood Lake has a really nice swim beach. Don't take my word for it, go see it for yourself. Silverwood Lake is a very popular place to go camping. Head on over to Mesa Campground and sleep underneath the night canopy. When it comes to hiking at Silverwood Lake, there are numerous trails that you can enjoy. Now the ultimate trail that runs along Silverwood Lake is the Pacific Crest Trail, or the PCT as some will call it. The Pacific Crest Trail starts at the Mexico border and heads all the way up to the Canada border. So for the extreme hiker, have at it. Let me know if you've done the entire Pacific Crest Trail. Would love to hear your trail tales in the comment section. All right, that brings us to our fun fact. Silverwood Lake was named after W.E. Ted Silverwood, a Riverside County resident who worked continuously for water and soil conservation. Today, Silverwood Lake is the highest lake of the California Water Project. When it comes to fishing here at Silverwood Lake, you can have yourself a great time and fish in numerous coves and around the lake. During the winter months, the lake is stocked with rainbow trout, and in the summer months, the lake is stocked with catfish. The lake does have a pretty good population of largemouth bass. And because Silverwood Lake does get its water from the California aqueduct, you are going to get your big stripers in this lake. Okay, so what is it going to cost you to pack 10 kids into a minivan and head on over to the lake? It's going to cost you $10 per vehicle. When it comes to camping at Silverwood Lake, family site fees per night is going to run you $45 per night. Boat Reynolds. To rent a pontoon boat, you're looking at $400 for the entire day. If you want to rent a fishing boat, prices start at $165 on up. Want to paddle around on a kayak? The first two hours are going to rent you $20 per hour. After that, it's going to be $10 per hour. If you want to launch your boat over at Silverwood, it's going to run you $10 for the launch fee. Four. Lake Paris in the city of Paris. Lake Paris is a man-made lake completed in 1973. The park does offer a lot of recreational activities that you can enjoy, such as fishing, boating, swimming, picnicking, camping, hiking, and equestrian. When it comes to being on the water, it seems that Lake Paris is a huge draw for boaters and jet skiers. Be sure to arrive at the lake early to avoid the crowds. In the summer, the swim beaches of Lake Paris are a great way to cool off during that hot summer heat. Just don't get slapped in the face with the occasional diaper swimming in the lake. If you're looking to barbecue or picnic away from the crowds, be sure to check out Alessandro Island. The island is only accessible by boat. And if you don't have a boat, there are plenty of picnic areas around the lake that you can enjoy. If you're looking for a campfire and sleeping underneath the stars, then Lake Paris can definitely accommodate you. If you like to climb huge boulders, be sure to check out Big Rock. Be advised, rock climbing gear is needed. One of the cool things that you can do here at Lake Paris is you can do some horseback riding and they allow camping with your horses. If you're visiting Lake Paris from Friday through Sunday, be sure to check out the Yahiyeki Regional Museum. Translated from the Kahuya language meaning home of the wind, this museum is one of a series of regional museums funded by the state of California. All right, that brings us to our fun facts. When it comes to Native American history, the Kahuya and the Lucenio Indian tribes had territories that overlapped in the inland areas, including Paris Valley. Artifacts found prior to dam construction indicate that both the Lucenio and the Kahuya both traded with nearby groups such as Serrano, Tongva, and Chimwevi tribes. These cultures are known for their rock art. Some are still visible around the lake today. Even though time has weathered away some of this artwork, you can still find pictographs and petroglyphs around the lake today. Lake Paris is your typical warm water fishery. The lake does have world class fishing here too. From huge bluegill to big crappie to record breaking largemouth bass, Lake Paris is an awesome place to go fishing. When it comes to bass fishing here, there are numerous of techniques that you can apply here to catch that record breaking bass. The shoreline bass fishing here is awesome as well. So take advantage of it, get your walk on, 
this is a great lake to have some fishing memories at. Okay, so what is it going to cost you to get into Lake Paris? Well, if you're looking to stack the kids in a minivan and bring them all out to the lake, going to run you $10 per vehicle. During peak season, those prices will jump up at $20 a vehicle. If you're looking to launch a boat, it's going to be $10 additional. Tent camping will run you $35 on up. There's also a $7.99 reservation fee. RV hookup sites will run you $45 per night. Horse camping, expect to pay $21 a night. 3. Lake Hemet in the city of Mountain Center Lake Hemet is a water storage reservoir located in the San Jacinto Mountains. Lake Hemet was created in 1895 and was built by a private company. Today it's owned and operated by the Lake Hemet Municipal Water District. When it comes to outdoor activities at Lake Hemet, there really is a lot you can do at this lake. The lake does offer a lot, such as camping, hiking, fishing, cabin rentals, and glamping. Now there are a couple reasons why Lake Hemet is on top of their game. The lake is well maintained, the staff of Lake Hemet are always updating their websites and their social media to keep you current on lake activities. The staff at Lake Hemet really wants you to get out all day. From Memorial Day to Labor Day, you are allowed to go swimming at Lake Hemet. Because Lake Hemet is a mountain lake, there are going to be numerous hiking trails in and around the lake. When it comes to camping at Lake Hemet, tent sites and cabins are available. If you have a small boat or a kayak, you can launch that here at Lake Hemet. Just note, jet skis are not allowed at the lake. Fun fact, the 1980s TV show Airwolf used Lake Hemet as their filming location for the cabin scenes. Looking to get away? Then make a stop at Lake Hemet. The lake is scenic and very peaceful. If you're looking to further your outdoor experience, the town of Idlewild is just a short drive away. Okay, let's get to talking about the fishing here at Lake Hemet. Now the lake is stocked with rainbow trout and lightning trout. And if you've never caught a lightning trout, they are really fun to catch and pretty tasty as well. Almost like a salmon. All right, here's one of my channel members, David, from the YouTube channel, Pesca Divrisión y Cocina. Be sure to check out David's channel after this video. That way you can see all the latest when it comes to fishing, fun, and cooking. And if you want to become a channel member, hit that join button so that way we can feature one of your favorite outdoor pictures in a future video. All right, so what is it going to cost you to get into Lake Hemet? If you want to take a quick walk around the lake and maybe just enjoy some scenery, you can spend only $5 here for parking. You will need to buy a Forest Adventure Pass and you can get one of those at the Lake Hemet store. The store is located at the front entrance. General admission into the lake is going to run you $25 per vehicle. If you're looking to tent camp with a lake view, prices start at $59 a night. Cabin rentals will start at $155 per night. When it comes to boat rentals here at Lake Hemet, pontoon rentals, two hours will run you $195, four hours, $350. To rent an aluminum fishing boat, you're looking at $65 for two hours, $105 for four, and $210 for eight hours. Kayak rentals are available as well. Glamorous camping, also known as glamping, starts at $175 per night. Two, Diamond Valley Lake in the city of Hemet. Diamond Valley is a man-made lake. It's one of the largest and newest reservoirs in California. The lake began construction in 1995 and the lake was completed by 2003. This is another lake that was brought to you by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. So what is that going to mean? No body contact allowed on the water. Leave those jet skis at home. And what else can you not do at Diamond Valley Lake? Camping and overnight staying at the lake is prohibited. And the same goes for barbecuing. Diamond Valley Lake has a really nice walking path that goes around the entire lake. The path is about 23 miles and it is generally a low to moderate hike. If walking around the lake isn't your thing, Diamond Valley Lake does offer electronic bike rentals. When it comes to hiking or walking around Diamond Valley Lake, know your surroundings because there are cougars. And no, I'm not referring to those former Orange County cougars that now live in Riverside County. I'm talking about actual real life mountain lions. I've seen a few of these while out fishing at Diamond Valley, so just be cautious. Diamond Valley Lake is the jewel of California. And because of that, DVL holds some gems in this lake. This lake was developed with the bass fishing community in mind. When it comes to fishing here at DVL, the lake is stocked with Florida strain largemouth bass. In fact, when construction began, Largemouth bass were to be the main predatory fish of this lake. They brought these bass in from a local San Diego lake. However, that all changed because the lake does receive its water from the Colorado River aqueduct. And because of that, striper fishing is now an option here at DVL. 
the lake does have quality panfish here too. During the summer months, DVL is stocked with catfish, and in the winter months, DVL is stocked with huge rainbows and lightning trout. DVL does get the number two spot because of the quality of fishery. All right, and one of my favorite fun facts from this list. During excavation of Diamond Valley Lake, dinosaur fossils were uncovered from the Pleistocene era, or better known as the Ice Age. All these fossils can be found at the Western Science Center, located at the main gate entrance. Okay, so what is it gonna cost you to enjoy a day at Diamond Valley Lake? Parking your vehicle is gonna run you $11. If you're looking to launch your boat, it's going to run you $13. Fishing DVL is going to run you $9. 12 and under is going to be $6. If you're looking to shore fish or just want to enjoy the trail, that's going to be an additional $4. When it comes to boat rentals, renting a pontoon is going to run you $200 for the full day. To rent one of their premium bass boats, it's going to be $199 for the full day. And just a standard fishing boat is going to run you $105 for the day. DVL does offer price breaks on Wednesdays, 50% off boat rentals. Since you've hiked this far into the video, I just want to give a special thanks to you, the viewers. And now that you went fishing around and found some outdoor knowledge, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for all future notifications. That way you can get up to date information on all the latest videos. Alright, last but not least, I do have a super thanks button. This button allows you to further support the channel by helping me out with gas station coffee and Starbucks in a can. And climbing to the top of the mountain is going to be number one. Located in the San Bernardino Mountains, and of course in the county of San Bernardino, Big Bear Lake in the city of Big Bear Lake. This alpine lake and its surrounding areas is considered a mountain resort. So what does that mean? There's going to be a plethora of outdoor activities that you and the family can enjoy. From mountain bike riding, hiking, rock climbing, fishing, there's just so much you can do at Big Bear. And winter sports include skiing, snowboarding, tubing, and snowball fights. Looking to discover Big Bear? Take the hike up to the Castle Rock Trail. This is a moderate trail great for family hiking. Once you reach the end of the trail, you'll be rewarded with lake views. Other awesome sites to check out, Old Dam Keeper's House, and from a distance, check out Treasure Island. If you're looking to have a family picnic, I would suggest hanging out at Boulder Bay. Don't want to take the main highway to get to Big Bear? Looking for more of a scenic route? Check out the Coxie Trail Road. This road takes you right into the town of Fonskin, and from there you could drive into the town of Big Bear. If you're looking to spend some money, head on over to the village of Big Bear Lake. The village offers a wide array of shops and boutiques. There's even a store that has those old time photos that you can get. If you get hungry, the village does have a nice selection of restaurants that you can choose from. Head on over to one or all of them and get that great outdoor dining experience. Looking for a place to walk off that dinner? Head on over to the Stanfield Marsh. Once there, you'll find the Big Bear Kissing Bridge. Fun fact, the grizzly bear is on the California state flag. And Big Bear used to be the home of the grizzly bear. Unfortunately, due to overpopulation, the grizzly bear no longer exists in California. However, alongside with other animals, you can still see a grizzly bear at the Big Bear Alpine Zoo. When it comes to camping at or around Big Bear Lake, there are plenty of campgrounds that you can choose from. We always camp at Serrano, and we've always been pretty happy there. And just so you're aware, Big Bear water levels are really low because of the drought. However, you still can do a lot of water activities on the lake. When it comes to boat rentals here at Big Bear Lake, head on over to the Big Bear Marina. They do offer a large luxury pontoon boat with Bluetooth radio. To be out all day on the pontoon boat, it's going to run you $530. Fishing boats, out all day price is going to run you $150. Big Bear Marina does have other options for rentals such as kayaks, wave runners, and stand-up paddle boards. When it comes to launching anything here at Big Bear Lake, you are going to be looking at a $20 launch fee. That includes boats, kayaks, and float tubes. Okay, when it comes to fishing here at Big Bear Lake, the lake is heavily stocked with rainbow trout. Big Bear Lake does host an annual trout derby known as Trout Fest. And because of this derby, they stock the lake with an additional 5,000 pounds of trout every year. This is a great event for family fun and fishing. Now there are other species of fish that live and thrive at this lake. Largemouth bass tend to do pretty well here, and there's a healthy population of smallmouth bass in here too. And I know this because one day I was out fly fishing for trout and happened to catch a bunch of smallmouth. 
There I am with one of them. Also, what's a really popular method for fishing has been bow fishing. This method of fishing has been really popular because of the invasive carp that live in this lake. You can enjoy fishing 24 hours a day, seven days a week here at this lake for free. If you're looking for a tackler or just want to know some general info on the lake, head on over to Big Bear Sporting Goods. Big Bear Lake takes the top spot because of all the variety of outdoor activities that you can do here. And because of all the great memories that Big Bear has to offer, this lake is family approved. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to check out this video right here and check this video out right here too. This is a really funny one. Last but not least, make sure to leave these places nicer than you found them. Later.